fragile place in which, uh, in particular in Mali and uh, uh, Burkina Faso, but also uh, in Niger, you see uh, long-term poverty, conflict, violence topped by climate change, uh, representing a very explosive mix and displacing populations in big numbers. Uh, creating humanitarian needs, disrupting societies as we knew them. Uh, I was in particular impressed to see how herders and agriculturalists are getting into intercommunity conflict because uh, arable surface is shrinking because of changing rainfall patterns. And so you have on top of the more ideological driven conflict between jihadi movements and states. You get intercommunity violence, you get banditism, you get disruptions of civilians in big numbers and uh, a very serious situation because it's a very fragile situation and it's contagious to the region. You have seen it swapping over into Bur Burkina Faso and into the border region of Niger. And it's that contagion really that folks here at the World Economic Forum, at least this year it seems, are more open <coughs> Uh, to discussing and to understanding and, and at least trying in part to find some kind of solution. What is the role of corporates here? I think uh, increasingly I could uh, agree with you that there is a more openness uh, to look at those fragile contexts and as a corporate to say we have a responsibility to see what we are able to do. I find it very interesting to hear to some of the corporates who say that they are driven by their employees and it's their employees who ask them to become more active in terms of uh, stabilizing, citizens. investing, uh, social investments in those uh, particularly unstable situations and that was very much uh, also the message I came to the corporates uh, to see how we can complement humanitarian assistance which is still necessary as a short-term relief by much more uh, uh, investment into social goods, social services, promotion of local businesses, promotion of s civil society, helping themselves, uh, leading to independent lives. So it's a message which uh, is well received, not only because we bring it as humanitarians, but obviously because it's brought to the top leadership of, corpor of corporations by their own staff. You've been doing this a long time. Talk me through your worries about uh, the donor fatigue that we've seen from Western countries when it comes to <coughs> refugees as well as to climate change and, and working within that sphere, but also the leadership is changing, whether it be in European nations or in the West, the United States, for example, um, and their views don't necessarily align um, with continuing the level of donor support we've mm -hmm. seen in the past. How worried are you about that and the impact it could have on your efforts? Well, I. Uh Short term, I'm less worried than middle and long term. I think these are trends which often are sinking in only after a couple of years. Uh, we haven't seen negative effect of donor fatigue in humanitarian action and emergency operations over the last couple of years. We have had constant support and big support even in, from countries which are more in this sort of populist movement. So there is obviously uh, shifts are not immediately translating into humanitarian assistance. My colleagues working on development, long-term development on climate change, they have more difficulties today defending the respective budgets. And my point here is also to say if we don't get the long term right, you can't really spend reasonably on the short term either. So it is a concern that we lose a certain minimum of insight and solidarity by societies, recognizing that their stability at the end of the day depends on the stability of other regions. It's so striking, uh, again coming back to the Sahel, I've been in Agadez talking to uh, 50 to 100 stranded migrants which have been deported back to Agadez for the second, third, fourth time. They have been in the Mediterranean. It's just a problem which doesn't stop. And transferring the problem a couple of hundred kilometers further south doesn't really solve. And so my point here is really, it is important when you have an economic community coming together in Davos, looking at 
the interconnectedness of the world that you also speak about, the interconnectedness of the problems, and you s generate a sense of responsibility. Absolutely.